here's the thing. We've all heard choruses. We know what they sound like. But as songwriters, when it comes time to actually sit down and write that incredible chorus that you're imagining in your mind, it's very common to find that our tastes and our ears are actually more sophisticated than our abilities. There is really one major trap that a lot of beginner songwriters fall into when writing their choruses, and we've all done it. So in this video, what we're gonna do is tell you what a chorus isn't, tell you what a chorus is and what it's meant to do. And we're also gonna give you three really practical tips, one lyric, one melody, and one chord tip that are all gonna help you write better choruses faster. And if you're someone who's a little more experienced and have written a few songs, we've got a little bonus tip at the end that you might be interested in trying. So let's talk about what a chorus isn't. And what I want to do is tell you a story from my own beginnings as a songwriter that Benny was involved in. Benny and I have been musical collaborators for almost 20 years, which is shocking. So at the very, very beginning, we were rehearsing for my very first album launch. And we were in a band together. There were other musicians. It was an incredible band. And I remember rehearsing this one song of mine. And we got to the chorus. And I remember thinking of some arranging ideas. And I turned to Benny and I said, hey, Benny, do you think you could play a little bit more slide guitar on the chorus? And what did you say? I said, yeah, that, that'd be great. Sure. Um, which bit's the chorus? And I thought in my mind, what the hell do you mean which bit's the chorus? It's the bit where the lyrics repeat. What I have learned over 20 years since that time being a professional songwriter as well as teaching many thousands of other songwriters to write better songs is fundamentally an understanding about what a chorus actually is and what it is not. And it turns out that a chorus is not just the bit where the lyrics repeat. A chorus is also not just the bit where you kind of sing louder. And there is an instinct there when you're crafting a song to take a bit of lyric that is repeating and go, well, that feels like it could be the chorus and just let it be the chorus. And this really undervalues what the chorus is there to do in your song. And this is really the trap that we're talking about because a chorus is not a chorus because you repeat a section. You repeat a section because it's the chorus. And this is a fundamental difference that is really important about what a chorus actually is at its essence, what it is actually doing inside the song that is different to all the other sections. So if that's what a chorus isn't, if it's not just the part where the lyrics repeat, if it's not just the part that you feel like it could be a chorus, what is the chorus? What is it there to do? A chorus is the central expression of the core idea, the central emotion, the central image or metaphor that expresses the singular idea that is the beating heart of your song. Oh, that's a lot. It is a lot. It's a big deal. Okay. <laughs> and another way to think about this that has been transformative for me in thinking about this stuff and learning how to really approach the craft of writing a great chorus is to think about the chorus as the response to the problem of the song. So often what we'll do is we'll use the verses and the sort of expository sections, the sections that develop the idea and take things further and deeper. We use those to expose the essential problem, tension or conflict that is driving our need to write a song in the first place. And when we think of a song like that, the chorus is where we get to express the response to the problem. But it's important to understand response doesn't mean answer. We're not setting up a question we need to answer in the chorus. It's a different kind of relationship. And there are many, many different ways we might respond to a problem. For example, an appropriate response to a problem might actually be a question. And we can see this in songs like What's Love Got To Do With It by Tina Turner and Where Is My Mind by The Pixies. Another type of response might be an action or a decision that you're going to make. And we hear this in the song Chandelier, where she sings, I'm going to swing from the chandelier. You hear it with Jason Mraz's song, I'm Yours, and Bridge Over Troubled Water, 
by Simon and Garfunkel. Another kind of response might be an insight or a realization that you have. And a really good example of this is the song Royals by Lord. And if we look at the lyrics in the chorus in this case, one of the things that you could imagine is that she's thinking in her mind, and so I realized we'll never be royals. So this kind of chorus is one where you realize something and the chorus is the expression of that realization or insight. The response might be in the form of a piece of advice and often framed in the command or imperative voice. Think of Let It Be by The Beatles, Three Little Birds by Bob Marley and The Wailers, or more recently, Put Your Records On by Corinne Bailey Ray. Another type of response to a problem can sometimes be an expression of the peak emotion. And a good way to think of this is like what most needs to be said, the most honest, direct expression of something that you really need to tell someone. Some examples of this are You've Got a Friend by Carole King, Beautiful by Christina Aguilera, Locked Out of Heaven by Bruno Mars. And a slightly more abstract version of this, but still a response to a problem, is when we have a central metaphor or image that expresses the core idea. Think of The River by Bruce Springsteen. Rocket Science by Laurie McKenna, or Slow Cooker by John Legend. If we continue to fall into the trap of approaching the writing of the chorus by simply picking a section and repeating it because it feels like it's worthy of repeating, it's almost like throwing darts blindfolded. We're kind of doing the action of chorus writing, but we're entirely missing the target, which is to say we're missing the point of what a chorus is. It's not just about throwing darts, which is to say it's not just about repeating a section. It's really important to understand what it is that we are shooting for. All of these different kinds of responses to the problem are really the emotion that is underneath whatever the story, situation, experience or idea is that we're exploring in the rest of the song. And something that we've got for you is an entire free PDF that you can download that's a series of writing prompts and questions that are all really designed to cut to the core. So as you're exploring a song idea through lyrics, through storytelling, it can be really useful to just stop for 10 or 20 minutes and go through this series of chorus writing prompts that's going to help you identify what it is that is underneath all of this other stuff. And so if we're thinking of this dartboard analogy and looking at that target right in the middle, what sits in that target is what we can think of as the title. And when we say title, we don't mean what you end up calling the song. It really is this short phrase that sums up everything this song is about. It's the thing that when people hear, they walk away repeating that thing in their head over and over. And I know it feels like we're laboring this point a little bit, that you really have to have this target that you're aiming for, that your song really is about defining this one thing that the song is actually about, and that title phrase represents that thing. But the reason we're going into detail and really trying to express how important this is, is because this is really the trap. So many songs get written where it feels like a solid song, but we get to the end of the song and it's not clear what that song is about. There isn't really that crystallized, clear target that has been set up by the songwriter. And so it might be an interesting listening experience, but we don't have an emotional connection with that song because it's missing that core element. So our goal as songwriters is not only to make a decision about what mm. that title is, what the target is, but then to employ the craft of songwriting, the tools that we have available to us with chords, with melody, with rhythm, to really put neon lights around that central target. Just a quick note here, we are not just talking about pop writing. This principle is universal to songwriting, regardless of what genre you're writing in. Because what we're really talking about here is as a songwriter, being able to express something that comes from you, but that actually transcends you and connects with someone else. And that only happens when you are clear about what it is that you are trying to convey. And you know this as a listener, when you hear a song and the idea behind that song is so clear and so beautifully expressed, it, it hits you, it connects with you and you feel it. And it is a beautiful, satisfying and rewarding experience. We often think as songwriters that if we keep it vague and ambiguous and open to interpretation, that this somehow makes the experience deeper for the listener. But the opposite is true. When we're vague with what we're trying to communicate, the experience for the listener is shallower. They can't connect with what we're trying to express. But 
When a message is clear, that clarity translates into a powerful and deep emotional experience for a listener. Right. Onto the tips. <laughs> okay. So firstly, there are so many different tools and techniques and things that we could talk about in terms of crafting a great chorus, but we really want to keep it manageable and contained in this video. So what we want to do is give you one tip in each of three categories, lyrics, melody, and chords. And really each of these tips is something that is very high impact, that if you implement this in the next 10 minutes, you will write a chorus that is a lot more clear and conveys the central idea of your song in a much more clear and direct way. All right, so let's get into it. So the first tip is a lyric writing tip, and the tip is very very simple. Once you have found your title, which is often six words or less, conveys that core central theme, idea, emotion, image or metaphor, right, in an interesting, memorable or simply direct way. Once we've found that title, repeat the title at least twice inside the chorus. I cannot tell you how many students' songs I see where the chorus just looks like another verse. Mm. It's just more exposition. It's more storytelling. Mm. They haven't put neon lights around the central idea through the simple act of repetition. So repeating that title at least twice. One of my favourite techniques for doing this is a technique called title book ending, which is all about repeating that title line as the first line and the last line of the chorus. One of the benefits of repeating the title as the first and last line is that we're taking advantage of power positions. Power positions are lines within the structure of a section that have naturally brighter spotlights shining on them. Human psychology is just such that people pay more attention to the first thing and the last thing that you say or sing. And so when we put the title in those bright spotlights in the first position and last position, we're literally putting the title, the most important part of our song, into the position where the neon lights are already shining bright. Some examples of title book ending choruses are Stay With Me by Sam Smith, Chandelier by Sia, and Stranger in His Kiss by Laurie McKenna. So let's talk about tip number two, which is a melody writing tip. And it's another way to shine those lights even brighter on the title of your song. So here's the tip. Take the widest interval in your melody throughout the whole song and place that on the most important words in the title, the words that really express this central theme or idea of your song. And when we're talking about interval width, we're really just talking about the distance between two notes. So throughout your verses, it's okay to have these smaller intervals, these, you know, intervals that aren't so wide. That actually creates a beautiful opportunity for the chorus to come along and really open up those intervals. And what the ear does when it hears those widening intervals, it gets excited. Our ear latches on to large interval leaps. So when we use the widest intervals on the most important words in our chorus, it sends a clear sonic signal to the listener that this is the part you should be paying attention to. This is the essence of the song. A really great example of this by way of demonstration is the song Need You Now mm. by Lady A. So if we look at the lyric of the title line in this song, the lyric is, it's a quarter after one, I'm all alone, and I need you now. So it's interesting because the important statement, the key emotional idea of this song, and it turns out what the song is also called is, I need you now, right? That is the most expressive emotional yearning part of it. Mm. And it turns out that is where the biggest interval is so far in the song. So let's have a listen. It's a quarter after one, I'm all alone and I need if you listen to the rest of the chorus, there is actually a bigger interval that comes after that as the emotion of the chorus rises and rises. But that interval on Need You Now, it's the widest interval we've heard up until that point. So the ear really attaches itself to that moment. It becomes the hook and it lands inside the heart of a listener. Tip number three is a chord one. And simply put, it is this. Whatever you've been starting your other sections on, whatever chords you've been using to start those sections, you're gonna use a different chord to start your chorus. 
This is such a simple tip, but I think it's really <laughs> worth bringing up because mm -hmm. it's very, very common for songwriters to get into a four chord loop and that loop just rolls and rolls and it steamrolls its way through the pre-chorus and it steamrolls its way through the chorus. And it means that our melodies are trying so hard to create mm. the chorus, to create the hook, and we can be left with this feeling like, oh, it's just not working. And a lot of the time, it is actually because our chords, the bedrock, the foundation of our whole song is just doing the same thing over and over again. We're not using chord strategies and really simple strategies like mm. change the bloody chord mm. to create a moment of contrast, to signal again to the ear that we have arrived mm. at a different point in the song. And it's not that you can't have four chords that repeat throughout a whole song. There are lots of songs that do this, but you'll find in those songs they have used other elements to create that contrast or to send a clear signal that this is now the chorus. What we're saying with this tip is that you really get to just use one new chord and send that signal to the listener that this is now a different section. And that is just such a simple and easy way to create that contrast and send that signal to your listener. A really good example of this is the song Someone Like You by Adele, which we'll actually demonstrate for you in a moment. And what you're gonna hear is that the pre-chorus of this song actually completely avoids the home chord of the key of the song. So we're gonna play it in the key of G major. And the pre-chorus doesn't have the chord G major in it at all. But guess what? The first chord of the chorus is G major, and it's pretty dramatic. Let's have a go. I hate to turn up out of the blue uninvited, but I couldn't stay away. I couldn't fight it. I'd hoped you'd see my face and that you'd be reminded that for me it isn't over. And finally, if you've tried all of those and you're looking for a bonus tip, here it is. One of the things you can do is flip expectations by doing what most songs don't do. And that is taking the chorus and instead of making it the emotional high point, dynamically the loudest point in the song, do the opposite. Make it the quietest, most subdued part of the song. And we hear this to great effect in the Radiohead classic, Karma Police where we're expecting the chorus to really launch, but instead everything pulls back and it becomes the quietest part of the song. And what this does to us as a listener is it really draws us in. It creates this, this different kind of spotlight effect in a way because it is so unusual and you really don't hear it very often. So give that one a try and you might find that it really works for the song that you're writing. So make sure to grab the free Chorus Writing Prompts PDF right now. The link is in the notes. And if you're interested in more tips on writing your best lyrics, check out this video right here. <laughs> Happy songwriting. Happy songwriting. Bye.